Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So the video that I have for you guys today is a little bit of a shorter one, but I still wanted to make sure I covered it because it's such a heartbreaking one and it started out having a decent amount of coverage, but it's definitely lost a lot of steam and I haven't really seen any coverage on it in the past couple of years. So I wanted to bring attention back to this case because I definitely think that it's solvable and I think that the more people that know his story, the better chances of his family finally finding justice. With that being said, let's get into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the unsolved murder of Brenton Estroff. Brenton Estroff was freshly 29 years old when he was shot and killed on his 29th birthday on October 16th, 2019. Now, one of Brenton's co-workers actually reached out to me and asked that I cover this case, and she was able to give me more insight into just what kind of person he was. Brenton was originally from Mulalaba, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, on Queensland's Sunshine Coast in Australia before moving to the US in 2011 to attend Southern Virginia University to play football. Ball. He played six games with the team as a punter. He had big aspirations for himself and hoped to one day play football in the NFL. He also really enjoyed playing basketball, so he was just overall a super athletic kind of guy. Brenton went on to meet a woman named Angelina after his brother had set up the two on a date. According to Angelina, the two's connection was obvious from the very beginning and they knew right away that they were going to get married and they did get married in 2015. The two decided to settle in a home in the Houston suburb of Katy, Texas. Now, Katy, Texas was described as a very safe and quiet neighborhood where people felt safe enough to keep their doors unlocked at night. There wasn't much crime in the area and it was a very appealing place to move and to raise a family. He then went on to work at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. He was described as a very hard worker who could be friends with absolutely anyone. In fact, he was such a hard worker that he earned a promotion to manager very quickly after starting. He was loved by everybody who worked with him. He had this big personality, a bunch of tattoos, a thick Australian accent, and he was the biggest jokester. He was also known as someone who could deal with even the most difficult customers, and he was that guy that was able to deliver bad news to customers if need be. His coworker also described him as being a bit of a protector. She described that if a customer was ever yelling at her or being rude, Brenton was always there to back her up and step in if need be. Also at the time, him and Angelina had two adorable children, Elena and Asher, ages one and three years old. Brenton was described as being an absolutely doting father and a loving husband. Even his coworker could just feel how much love he had for his family. He had a tattoo dedicated to his wedding date, and he would just light up any time he got the chance to talk about his two babies. His family meant everything to him. His mom also described him as being such a fun and loving person. He could always make you laugh to the point that your stomach would hurt. Now, October 15th, 2019 started as a wonderful day for the family of four. It was the day before Brenton's birthday and the family was celebrating together. Angelina baked his favorite brownies since he didn't like cake and the kids sang him happy birthday. And he was such a great dad that he actually let his kids blow out his candles instead of him because he knew that they wanted to. That night, him and Angelina put their two kids to bed before heading to bed themselves. Unfortunately, they didn't know just how their amazing day was going to end in the most tragic and unimaginable way possible. Just after midnight on October 16th, 2019, which was Brendan's birthday, he woke up to the sound of shattered glass at the back of his home. The first thing he did was to grab his phone and dial 911 to call the dispatcher and tell them that he had heard someone breaking into his home. Brenton had then jumped out of bed and walked out of his bedroom only to see that two men were standing right next to his bedroom and his two children's bedrooms. So he immediately took on both of these men and a struggle ensued. He fought against these two men so hard that he fought them all the way back to the kitchen. He wanted to do whatever it took to get these two men away from his wife and his children. Once they got into the kitchen though, the struggle continued and these men fired off two shots, 
one hitting a wall and one hitting Brenton directly into the chest. Right after this, the two intruders fled the home immediately without taking absolutely anything. Just moments later, 911 received an absolutely frantic phone call from Angelina. She was panicked and terrified, and this 911 call is just absolutely heartbreaking to listen to. She kept asking her husband if he's okay and begging for him to be okay. Before we can now, one, do you need please start? Oh my God. Help me, please, all. Oh. Someone just broke in my house and they shot my husband. Somebody broke Stop in your house and shot your husband. Hold on, ma'am. Yes, What's the address? Glenn Rosa Drive, Katie, Texas, 77. Okay. I don't know what to do. Okay, listen to me. I'm gonna give you some instructions. Okay, is your is your husband is your husband breathing? I don't know. I'm so scared to walk over there. They shot him. Okay, hold on. I'm so scared. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do. No, nope, it's fine. Hold on. Oh my God, I think he's really hurt. Baby, are you okay? Baby, are you okay? Can I call my neighbor? Is there anything I can do? Please? Give me give me a phone number so which I can have my call taker to uh seven one three. Hold on for me. Yes. Phone, call this number right here. And I'm you so want sorry, to I have two kids send, in the house. Send her na send her neighbor over is this your neighbor across the street? Uh, yes, right next door. Have the neighbor next door to go to her house. Stay on the phone with me, ma'am. Okay. I don't know what to do. Baby, baby, please. What's your name, ma'am? Angelina. Angelina. How long before the cops are here? They on the way. I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. I'm so sorry. They on the way. They on the way. Okay. 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 It's going straight to voicemail. Okay. 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 I'm I'm gonna ask you some questions. Okay, Angelina. We got okay. EMS and police on the way. Okay. Is the person okay. that shot your husband is he still there? No, I don't think so, but I'm so scared I can't walk over to my husband. Is your husband breathing? I don't know. I can't walk over there. He's making gurgling sounds. Okay, where was he shot at? In the chest, right in the chest, on the left side of the chest. I don't know what to do. Okay. I... Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, sweet, I need you to help me, okay? Can you get to your husband? I can, but the door, the, the window is broken, and I'm scared that they're still there. Okay, the window is broken? Yes. Where, were he, where was he at in the house? He, he was like, we were laying down in bed. We were asleep. Okay. I'm, just, I'm freaking out really bad right now, and I'm trying to get the, the number to my neighbor. Yeah, because it's just ringing. So do you have another name, number? No, um, I'm calling you from my husband's phone. I'm calling you from my husband's phone. How long before the call? There, we got several units on the way, sweetie. I just need you to ask, answer these questions, okay? And you cannot get to your husband at all? I can, but the window is broken, and I don't want to walk okay. over there. Okay, can you lay on the out. ground and get to him? <laughs> we have nothing but back windows. <laughs> okay, did they break in or did they shoot through the window or? I don't know. I okay. just heard glass shattering and then my husband jumped up and took off after him and they, they just okay. <laughs> started shooting. How many people? Are, how many people are in your house right now? I two adults, me and my husband. Two adults, kids. two adults and two kids. Yes, and I'm calling my husband right now. I mean, I'm calling my neighbors because I just need help. I need help. I need help so bad. Okay, where are your kids at right now? One is in the room with me, and the other one is in their bedroom. Okay. <laughs> she's trying to get to him, but she's scared to get to him. I'm trying to get her to get over there. <laughs> Okay. 
After hearing the gunshots, a neighbor quickly ran over to the house to try and resuscitate Brenton, but unfortunately, he was unsuccessful. I believe that Brenton had already passed away from these gunshots by the time police got there, but I'm not totally sure. It hasn't outright been stated in any articles, but either way, Brenton did end up dying from this gunshot wound. And again, Angelina was absolutely frantic. She was hysterical after losing her husband. But not only that, she was terrified of herself or her children being hurt. She got the feeling that maybe these men were still in the house somewhere and maybe they were gonna come back and hurt her and her children. I can't even imagine the fear that she must have been feeling of being inside of the house where she knows two men broke in and took the life of her husband. Immediately after the shooting, Angelina called several of Brenton's family members to let them know what had just happened. Of course, everybody in the family was absolutely devastated, especially since a lot of them still lived in Australia and couldn't be there right away. But they did take to social media to express just how much of an amazing person Brenton was and how much of a hero he was in his last moments. His parents said that Brenton is exactly the type of person that they would want their son to be like. He put his life in danger to protect his family at all costs, and he did. Because of him, the intruders didn't even get the chance to hurt his wife or his kids, and he truly died a hero. Now, when police started their investigation, they were immediately confused and baffled at the situation. They found out that the intruders had broken a gap into their fence to break in through the backyard, then broke one of their back windows to gain access into the home. But again, they didn't take anything. Police could not figure out a motive for why someone would break into their house and target them like that. Because to them, this didn't necessarily look like a robbery gone wrong since they didn't take anything. Police also said that these intruders broke in most likely knowing that people were still home and that children lived inside. There were two cars parked in the driveway indicating that people were home. The home was covered in Halloween decorations, which made it clear that children probably lived there. So the fact that these intruders probably knew that people were home and they still opted to break a window, which is very, very loud, in order to gain access into the home, that's a decision that absolutely baffled investigators. Because if you're going to try and be sneaky and break into somebody's home just to try and get some items and leave without hurting anybody, you're either going to wait until you know that nobody's home or you're going to do it in a very, very quiet way to ensure that nobody hears you and that you can get out of there without hurting anybody and with the items that you came in to get. Even police conceded that they had no reason to think that Brenton had anybody after him who wanted to hurt him for absolutely no reason. Brenton is known for being a kind and loving family man who wasn't known to have any enemies whatsoever and nobody could think of anybody who might want to hurt him. He genuinely was somebody who was not interested in engaging in risky behavior that could get him in trouble, and he wasn't known to be overtly rude or mean to anybody. I feel like this happens a lot in cases where people are like, oh, this was such a family man and he wasn't involved in anything bad, and then it later comes out that maybe he was involved with drugs or had a lot of money issues or the family was in debt or that they owed someone money. Those things usually come out when something is hiding something, but nothing came out to show that Brenton was hiding anything. He seemed like the family man who was happy in his life and happy in his relationship, and everything police found supported that. So the other thing that police had to consider is the fact that the family had only been living in that home for about six months. So they wondered if maybe they were mistaken for the family who lived there before them and they were wrongfully targeted because of that. The other thing I saw was that there was a domestic dispute only a few days before before the shooting in a house that was only a couple houses down from where they lived. They don't necessarily know if this case is specifically related, but they are considering the possibility of this being a case of someone getting the wrong address and going to the wrong home to go after the wrong person. Everyone who has come out to speak about this case publicly, both the family and police alike, have said that they have a gut feeling that this is a case of mistaken identity in one way or another. 
murder. As far as I've seen, police haven't really released a ton about the investigation or if they have any suspects or anything else about this case really, but they have released a couple of things that are very important for all of you to know and see. So they've released a video of what they believe is the suspect's car speeding away from the scene. It's described as a light-colored four-door sedan with what looks like a sunroof. They've also released descriptions of what they believe these men looked like. One man was described as having a darker complexion, standing at 5 feet 11 inches tall with a medium build and wearing a dark colored hoodie. The second intruder is also described as having a darker complexion, being 6 feet tall with a slim build, having a buzz cut. They also believe that there might be a third suspect involved who was driving the getaway car. But after this, unfortunately, that is all the information that I have on this case. There is currently a $25,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest of Brenton's killers. This case is just such a frustrating and heartbreaking one. I know that they even had to wait a while before having his funeral because Brenton's father was having a lot of trouble getting into the U.S. He works in the oil industry and has been to Iraq for work, so apparently that was flagged on his record, so they wouldn't give him a visa to get into the U.S. for a while, so the rest of his family just had to hold off on his funeral to make sure that his father could actually be there for it. So that just adds even more frustration and difficulty to this already horrific case. My heart goes out to his babies, his wife, his family, and anybody else who knew and loved him. He absolutely died a hero and deserves to be remembered as such. But honestly, that's not enough. Police have said that they're working day and night to figure out just who murdered this amazing young man, but like I said earlier, there hasn't really been much movement to this case or any public updates in this case in a very long time. So please, I just ask that you share Brenton's story and keep on the lookout for anything that might be considered suspicious. If you know anything about who did this to Brenton and ripped him away from his family, I urge you to call the Fort Bend County Crime Stoppers at 281-342-TIPS. All calls to Crime Stoppers are completely anonymous. You can also submit tips online or visit their Facebook. All of this information will be listed below in my description box. The family also has a GoFundMe page which helps pay for all expenses related to the investigation and the family paying for his funeral. The last donation was made almost two years ago though, so I'm not completely sure if the page is still active, but make sure you go ahead and check that out. Again, if there is anything that you take from this video, I just ask that you share his photo, share any of the articles that I've linked below, or share this video. Whether you're from Texas or anywhere in the U.S. or even outside of the U.S., let's spread this case as far as we can and help a desperate family find the justice that they so rightfully deserve. But with that, that is where I'm going to end today's case, and I'm really looking forward to hearing everybody's thoughts on this case down below. But before I go, I do have a little announcement that I wanted to say for the end of the video because I didn't want to put it at the beginning and sort of take away from the case. But I am looking for a graphic designer to help me design a logo for this channel. I'm looking for somebody to help me design a logo for my banner as well as the end screen at these videos or stickers or anything else that can have a logo on it. I do already have an idea of what I want and I've already kind of drawn it out. I'm not a very good artist so it doesn't look very good so obviously that's not the actual logo I'm going to go with but I do need somebody that's a little bit flexible that can take my ideas and put it into something that will look really good. Obviously I will be paying you for your work. I'll pay whatever commission that you have. I don't expect any discounts or anything. So if that sounds like something that interests you, please go ahead and contact me at rachelshannonyt at gmail.com. Just make sure you put in the subject like graphic designer or logo or something related to that so I know. I really hope that some of you see this message and I'm really looking forward to working with one of you on creating a logo for this channel. But either way, that is where I'm going to officially end today's video. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Make sure to follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to send those suggestions over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.